We're going to go up with a 13 and a half inch tall 20 by 20 flanged plenum. Above that is going to be a 10 inch tall transition that's going to take up the space between this new plenum box and the cutoff portion of the existing trunk line. That open space there was 22 and a half inches. So if you know if you add 13 and a half and 10 and a half, you can come up with 23 and a half. Well, you lose an inch whenever the S slip dries up inside the other S slip. And of course, the drive tab is bent over to allow for the drive ears. So your totals have to end up an inch longer whenever you're making the uh, the rough drawings or the uh, the raw cuts on the material. And we're going to be making a 10 inch tall transition. That's going to be uh, 20 by 20 starting out to match the top of this plenum box but the top of it is going to flare out in two directions two inches one way two and a quarter inches the other way uh, to end up with roughly a nominal 24 and 3 8 24 and a quarter dimension we'll start off by making the simple plenum down here so you got to figure out what your cut size is going to be you know you're going to be 13 and a half inch tall at the finish but you have to allow one inch for your flange so it's going to start off with a dimension of 14 and one half by 20 plus 20 which is going to be 40 plus a quarter of an inch for a bend and one inch for the Pittsburgh so that's going to be 20 20 plus one and a quarter which is 41 and one quarter times two that's going to give us a one half you know two halves so that we can run a Pittsburgh around the two opposing corners and then lock them together We'll have a flange around the perimeter, a perimeter to attach to the top of the furnace, so or the top of the A-coil. So two 14 and a half by 41 and a quarter to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and mark a line at 21 because that's the 20 inch dimension plus the one inch for the lock farmer. Then I'm going to go 20 again for the other portion of the duct and one quarter for the quarter inch that goes into the lock farmer. Now I tell you, I do not use magic markers to lay out. I always use a scribe. But just for those that insist on being able to see the marks, and I know it's very difficult to see the marks on video with the scribe. So I went ahead and, and scribed this and then traced over the scribe mark with the magic marker. But I can still see the scribe marks to make my cut. But this is a typical notch that I do on a Pittsburgh edge. You can see the half inch at a 45 and then the full one inch by one inch. And over here the same thing, this is going to be a Pittsburgh edge over here. So there's a half inch going in at a 45, then the full one inch by one inch. You can see up here where it's going to fold at the 90 degree. Slice in a full one inch, take a half inch notch, 45 on both sides or thereabouts. And then of course the other end of the same duct. Same thing. And then over here on the quarter inch side, take a half inch off at a somewhat of an angle and 90 degrees in a quarter of an inch top and bottom do this on both pieces of duct now what you guys got to remember this ain't no Hollywood production this is just me and my dog out in the shop you know what you see is what you're gonna get I try to do it as good as what I can uh, what I can and sometimes the best is not quite good enough you know for some but it doesn't matter At different times, those quarter inches you want to cut in at a, a pure 90, and at other times you can also put them at an angle, 30, 40, 30 or 45 degree angle at the same time. It just depends on what it is you're doing with that particular, oh, I notched that and I shouldn't have notched that. That should have been a straight cut right there. But it doesn't really matter because that's just the Pittsburgh.
Now one edge of this is going to have a double hem 90 degree flange to screw down on the top of that coil box and one of these up here is going to have an S and the other one's going to have a drive connection. So we'll prepare that here in just a second. Now I like to cross break my pieces before I run them through the lock farmer because if not whenever you cross break it after a lock farmer smashes a lock farmer down and I don't like that. So I like to cross break them beforehand and this being 20 by 20 and there's all kinds of of suggestions or actually there's some requirements in the uh, in the smack the codes and stuff that tells you when and where to put cross breaks and all that kind of stuff but I always just kind of go by what it feels like. This is one of the few or what I know will work as far as oil canning and that's the whole whole idea is to stiffen it up so you don't get that breaking back and forth in oil canning. This is one of the few cases when I'll actually cross break or fold two pieces of metal at the same time. This really is not that critical. It's nothing more than a cross break. And like I said, cross breaks are somewhat arbitrary anyway. Up to a certain thickness metal, up to a certain width, you don't even have to cross break. But that's because they're capable of sustaining that static pressure inside the ductwork and not billowing back and forth and making that aggravating oil can every time the blower starts or stops. Okay, here's our cross brakes before we go to the lock farmer, so we're heading there now. You know, you can't make everybody happy whenever you're making these videos, you know. Uh, like I just said a minute ago, you know, this ain't a Hollywood production. I don't have the best lighting, you know, heck, I got very poor lighting. I don't even have enough room to set up tripods and cameras, you know, and all that kind of stuff adequately, so I kind of have to muddle around. Uh, but I do have the machinery, you know, the, it might be old, might be antiquated, but at least I have the machinery that still does a, a fairly decent project, uh, product, or gives me a fairly decent product. But uh, I got a, what I thought was a snarky comment by a guy here on one of the older videos just last week, and he said that he didn't have a Pittsburgh, and my video was of no use to him. Well, you know what? I just told him right then, it's fine, this video's not for you then, you know. There's plenty of places I told him to go ahead and search on YouTube for bending sheet metal with 2x4s or, or angle iron because there's plenty of videos out there that show you how to do that on your hands and knees down in the basement. Nothing wrong with that as long as you do it adequately and do it properly. But my video ain't for you, dude. You know what? This is for guys that have the machines or may want to, to see a variation of how the machines are used, you know. Because everybody's got a different idea. Everybody's got a different way of doing things. And uh, like I said, I ain't going to satisfy everybody, you know what I mean. So go ahead about your business. Bend your, bend your metal with an angle iron. Uh, don't even bother about trying to advance yourself and buying a lock farmer. It's, it, if that's the way you want to do, just go ahead and spend your entire career doing them without going to the trouble of piecing together shop equipment. Uh, I'm sure it'll be rewarding for you uh, as the machines that I've purchased over the years have been rewarding to me. I started buying this stuff 40 some odd years ago, you know, just piecing together a little at a time. Uh, whenever I get a bargain, find a bargain, jump on it, buy it, and put it together. And the result is what you guys, what I, what I share with you guys here in my shop. So at any rate, like I say, if you like the old machines, this video is for you. If you don't like them because you ain't got them, do a Google search and go watch somebody else's stuff, man. Man, I hate to be like that, but you know, it's just so frustrating because, you know, you just can't satisfy everyone and it gets to the point to where you don't want to try to satisfy anyone. <laughs> you know, I'm just venting a little bit there. Forget it. This is a sheet metal video. We're going to go back to business of making this. Time for to put our half inch double hemmed flange on it. And again, if you use a heavy enough material, typically 24 gauge on a, on a residence or anything like that, uh, you don't even have to put a double hem flange on it. This is 26 gauge material here, and 26 gauge with a single thickness fold will buckle on you. And a lot of times when you're trying to run a screw into it, and it's uh, real frustrating on the job. So I just bite the bullet and make a double hem plan. And I never have a buckle, never have an issue or a problem. And that's the way I like it. Now 
Okay, we have to get our quarter inch on there. We have to do something else and then come back to that. I'll explain that to you in a minute. You know, all tools have their limitations, and currently I do not have a cleat farmer that will go beyond 18 inches. Now the plenum on this furnace, this is a pretty good sized furnace, I think it's 120,000 BTU. The plenum on this furnace is 20 inch by 20 inch. So I've got to fold the 20 inch drive cleat tab on one portion of the plenum, on, each, on one portion of each half of the plenum, and I don't have the capacity to do that. And I can fold them by hand, by using my hand seamers, but that it's always more, much more difficult. So I'm going to show you what you can do in a case like this. Go ahead and use your brake. The box and pan brake is okay, or the bigger one. This is just easier to film over here. But you just kind of crack it up just a little bit to get you a good definitive crack where you want that drive to be folded on. Then you can go ahead and take your mallet and tap this half back down because we want the drive cleat on this half over here. Now you can do this and it's going to leave a crease but it doesn't matter because that's a crease at the one half inch mark. So now that you've got that done you can loosen this, slide this out just a little bit. Now you can take your, your hand folders and put your hand folder on here like this and like this and with a real stout back up like that it'll be easy to fold this up pushing down as hard as you can with the tip of your fingers as you roll that up. To square that up you hit down with your hammer. and it'll minimize the rolling over of that drive. So now that that's done, gently latch it down, not crazy tight. Now you have a fairly accurate drive tab beyond the capacity of your cleat farming uh, machine. And you can see this right here is going to be hidden. It's going to be driven right up inside the uh, S. So now I'm going to go ahead and fold the 90 degrees on these guys here and be done with it. So here's the two halves of the 13 and a half inch tall, 13 and a half inch tall plenum, uh, square plenum for the furnace. And remember, you uh, leave them disassembled whenever you're doing a change out so you can field install because you never know if you're going to get in trouble or not. You always want to hedge your bet and maintain that variable for yourself. Now what we're going to do, because we're going to have a transition that goes two ways, but the front and the back is going to be reasonably straight, we're going to lay out the front as though you're looking at the very front of the furnace. Okay, so this is going to be 20 inches here and it's going to go two different directions, a different amount both directions, so what we need to do is establish the center line. So the drawing says that my total height of the thing is going to be 10, 10 inches. So I've made me a 10 inch mark here and I've actually ladled it, ladled in magic marker for you all. But now I want to find the center line because we want to be able to make that transition correctly the direction it needs to go. So if the bottom of it is 20, is 20 inches wide and then there's a 2 inch offset to this direction here. If I put a 3 inch in from the outside edge center line, I know I'll be able I'll be able to make it. So I marked 13 inch center line right here. So that's where we're at now. First thing we want to do is mark this for the one inch S or drive connection at the bottom. You can mark that. The next thing you'll want to do, this is going to be 20 inches at the bottom, so half a 20 is 10. So on that one inch mark right there, that one inch scribe mark, put you a mark. 
come over here again 10 inches from center on that scribe mark that's going to be your 20 inch base now we've got the room because we're three inches in we've got the room to go that way the two inches that we need to go so the drawing tells me that I've got a two and a quarter inch offset that direction here so if I come up here I need to go 10 plus two and a quarter which is going to be 12 and a quarter on the one inch mark first off you got to establish a, a line one inch down from the actual height of the fitting so make you a line at the nine inch mark up from the base or one inch down from that line and for your benefit you should be able to see that now we've got two and a quarter we're going to offset to the right hand side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here at 10 inches plus two and a quarter which is 12 and a quarter and on that one inch down line we're going to mark two and a quarter well we mark this one at 10 that one at 12 and a quarter that tells you that's a two and a quarter inch offset from one inch mark to one inch mark so we can connect those dots right there and so you can see it there we go this is a center line right here so don't worry that's not a cut line so now that we have this established we can add a quarter of an inch that will be our cut line over there back to the center line so we can measure additional offset to that side so that's a two inch offset to that side so 10 plus 2 is 12 so on the one inch line down put a subscribe mark this is still 20 inches down here so 10 inches over there is where that line is so we can connect those dots that's going to be your offset and your angle of that offset right there so now we add a quarter of an inch to that and for your benefit that's the cut size right there the outside line is going to be the cut size there's our piece before the notching the front and the rear are straight up and down we can use this and make a mirror image of this I've turned that layout upside down if you don't turn them upside down you're going to end up with two of the same side we can cut this out then we can use our handy four-way scribe to mark the one inch down here at the bottom the quarter inch going up the side the one inch at the top and the other quarter inch on the side so now it's time to notch this one Hopefully you can see the lines and the notches. There you go. There's your mirror image. Okay, now we've established the angles of the offset different angle this way different angle this way you want to make that wrapper that's got the lock form on it so what you do is you go to the actual point where you made the notch on the one inch line down from the top and up from the bottom and measure that line that's at an angle from that point to this point here I'm measuring almost exactly eight and a quarter inches so we know the length of this is going to be eight and one quarter inches but we have to add one inch for that up there and one inch for this down here so it, it's going to be 10 and one quarter by whatever the length is and we know that length is 20 inches so it's going to be add two for the two Pittsburgh's so it's going to be 22 inches now you go to the other side and measure that one and on this here uh, such a close transition and such close like this only goes out two and a quarter this only goes out two it's probably going to measure just about exactly the same so if I measure again from that one inch notch to this one inch notch 
we're exactly eight and a quarter over here. So we're about three thirty seconds shorter than what this is here. Three thirty seconds when it comes to this is not that big a deal. So this is going to be a ten and a quarter by twenty two. So we're going to make two cut sizes of ten and a quarter by twenty two. Here's ten and a quarter by twenty twos. Now these guys here have to have one inch all the way around because they have one inch for the lock farmer here, one inch for the lock farmer there, one inch for the drive tab up here. Even though you only use a half inch, you allow one inch because you have to fold the half inch back on top of it so it consumes one inch. And also one inch for the S where it's going to slide into the S. So a notch for the Pittsburghs. Pittsburghs usually go in straight unless you're on a real exaggerated angle. And again, i got to put a drive tab on this that's too wide for my cleat bender. Now we have straight sides, but we don't want straight sides, remember, because this is a transition that has to go out and then back in. So the bottom of it is going to have to curve that direction, and the top of it has to curve in. So we'll just put this back in here at the one inch mark, and put just a slight, slight curve in. We'll go back down here, and put a same little curve out. That too is field adjustable. It's going to be a subtle shift outward. It's going to be attached to this guy right here. So it's going to be our subtle two inch to that direction. And the other end is going to give us a subtle two and a quarter inch shift this other direction. Now bear in mind this is not assembled, it's just sitting here on the on the workbench. Uh, but here's our 20 by 20 plenum, 13 and a half inches tall. Here's our 10 inch or tra dual transition that goes into the trunk line, and it's completely done. And our total height needed to be about 22 and 3 quarters roughly and we are dead nut on 22 and 3 quarters the top I've left raw because that'll be determined on site tomorrow uh, how to put the uh, whatever areas to put the uh, drive tabs on and which ones to put the S's on a lot of times you can't have access to putting drives on because of things in the way and a lot of times you can't bend drives on to the existing ones because of things in the way so we we'll have to wait and see and then adapt that tomorrow. That's pretty much the end of this one here. It'll string out way too long if I include the installation in the same video. This is the end of the shop fabricate of a furnace changeout. It's a, actually a gas furnace, 120 or 100, 120,000 BTU I think it was. That's why it's such a, a large physical uh, dimension on this plenum. And if you notice, I think I showed you inside the trunk line how that goes up and serves a two stories, first and second floor of a three story house. There's a second unit that's up that takes care of the third story entirely by itself. But at any rate, you know what? We have beat this one to death. And this is Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here, guys.